this is a quick update about a big event we've got coming up next Sunday and also a quick update as to what we're doing and how we're trying to kind of ramp up rebel wisdom to respond to what's going on because our sense is that this is a beginning of as Jordan Hall talked about the meta crisis a lot of these sort of systemic issues that we've talked about on the channel around existential risk and phase shift are now really kind of coming home to roost like this is where we feel that we're at and we feel that this is going to be just the first stage in a growing crisis that is going to be who knows how long it will last but it but it will be part of this sort of shift into a new operating system as the old operating system shows that it's not really fit for purpose and we're going to try and kind of outline that in the films that we're going to be putting out over the next weeks but we're also thinking because we've always been about not just the intellectual content but also about kind of the the inner shifts that we need to to kind of make to to be equal to the challenge of the times that's what we're really thinking about with this big online event which Ali's going to talk about now yeah so the event is a free online event it's going to be on sunday april the 5th and it's really a combination of of the two things we have in the title resilience and sense making so the it, part of the way it came about is we were we were talking about what what's really needed right now what are we all in need of and those qualities feel really essential in a time when there's a huge amount of change, a huge amount of complexity. So resilience is our ability to withstand pressure, and that's becoming more and more important. And sense-making is obviously our ability to understand what's going on. And those two concepts and those two qualities that we can develop are very tightly coupled together. Because if we can't make sense of the world and we don't know what's going on, we don't know which way to turn, we don't know which direction to go in, that has a huge impact on our resilience. It kind of wears it down. So we need to be uh, connecting both of those things together. So in this film, we'll kind of introduce you to who's going to be at the event. And they kind of split into, let's call them sense makers. So people like Jamie Wheel and Diane Michelle Hamilton, who we'll talk about in a moment. And then a whole host of amazing facilitators who we've, we know or we've worked with in the past who, who can really give tools that, that increase either our resilience or our sense making. So yeah, we're just going to play a few short clips from some of the speakers and facilitators who are going to be taking part in the event, starting with Jamie Wheel. Things are likely to destabilize before they re-cohere. I think I opened our, our talk on Thursday night with this same quote from Buckminster Fuller because it's, it gets us to the point where he says, quite clearly, our task is predominantly metaphysical for it is how to get all of humanity to educate itself swiftly enough to generate spontaneous social behaviors that will avoid extinction. Now he wrote that half a century ago. Sure, he was on time, right? There were many, many things he was well ahead of the curve on. So we also have Diane Michelle Hamilton, who we've had on the channel before. And Diane is a really an expert facilitator. She's a Zen master and has a lot of experience in mediation as well. So Diane is going to be helping us to make sense of the emotional landscape we find ourselves in right now. So I find that the two together are extremely helpful. And during our time right now where we're experiencing more global stress, we talk about existential threats and wicked problems. Right now we're experiencing this challenge of this um, virus that's affecting all public health around the world. It's really important that we, we have both skill sets. So then we've got a combination of sort of individual practices for resilience and also community resilience. How do we build more anti-fragile community uh, for ourselves where we live and also online? So we have Sarah Ness and Rich Bartlett, who we both featured recently in our film about resilience. I think it's really important what they're going to share. I think it's really, really important. And we're also going to create a space for people to offer help and also ask for help and try and create more of a kind of community feeling of everyone who's attending the event. So as well as the talks and the framing, then we have a lot of different practices. And the practices are really important. I think we've said on the channel quite a few times that um, we, you know, we need an intellectual framing. We need to be able to make sense of things. But then we need to really live these uh, insights out in our own lives. And that's where we, we see the real impact is when we combine those two things. And so... Um, and as well as that, we, we're really um, conscious of having, I think, what John Verbeke often calls an ecology of practices. So lots of different techniques and practices uh, train different skills and different types of awareness in us. And so we're trying to get 
as broad a range as we can. So, uh, for example, we have um, breath work. Um, breath work is really, um, really, really very effective at helping us to gain insight, but also to regulate our nervous system, to sort of take control of um, our nervous system and build our resilience consciously. So we have an um, amazing breathwork facilitator called Nicola Price, who's going to be leading some breathwork sessions. And we also have uh, various different types of um, movement or what we sometimes call embodiment. So really coming into an awareness of our bodies and, and really connecting to that. So we have Carl Four, who's a brilliant yoga master uh, we've worked with before as well. And we have Chris Crudelli, who is a martial arts expert and uh, also a TV presenter. So he'll be giving some simple techniques people can use as well. And we also have a variety of other practices, you know, from, from mindfulness and relating practices as well. So there'll be a lot on offer and, and people can kind of, in those sessions, pick and choose whatever feels like you need the most uh, right now. There should hopefully be something for you. So yeah, on that note as well about relational practices, we're also releasing a couple of films that we made for our online course, one about inquiry and one a meditation that we recorded around inner sovereignty. And the inquiry one is basically a guide to how to do inquiry. It's something we've talked about in the past on the channel. We've talked about circling and different forms of dialogue of pursuing the truth of the moment. Like it's a really, really important practice. And the inquiry film talks about how to develop a practice of inquiry. And why I think that's really important that it'll go through in a lot more detail, but what it really amounts to is a relational practice. It's like a talking meditation of really trying to kind of come to the truth of what wants to emerge in the moment. And why I think that's really, really important, especially right now, is that as we start to develop that as a practice, we start becoming much more aware of that in ourselves much more self-aware. And then we also start to notice in the outside world what is new and exciting and what is emergent in, in the culture. We start to attune ourselves to what, wants, what is much more emergent in the culture. And that's really important right now because I think we're very clear that all of the pre-existing fixed answers and ideologies are not going to be enough for the task. We're going to have to kind of go into the liminal. We're in the liminal right now. We're going to have to go deeper into it to come out the other side. So that's what these practices allow us to do. Yeah, that's a really nice point about the liminal because part of that, that kind of in-between space that we're in as a culture, and I think a lot of us feel we're in in, in our lives right now because of the environment, um, You know, one of the skills that really helps in that moment is the ability to uh, be present and the ability to be with whatever's going on. And to kind of flow with it. And that's very much what uh, part of what inquiry can give is that we're on a kind of flowing process uh, of following different threads as they emerge rather than trying to place a frame onto something. And so the other thing we're releasing that we've had from that we developed rather from the online course is uh, what we call the sovereignty meditation. And the sovereignty meditation combines a lot of the practices we've mentioned already. So it combines breath and then goes into concentration or sort of meditation so really zooming in and then goes into contemplation or mindfulness and zooming out and then into inquiry either journaling or inquiring with someone and actually in a way the structure of that meditation um kind of says something as well about partly what's needed and partly why we're doing this this day is that there's a combination in that of zooming in and zooming out so John Verveke says really, uh, you know, talks really well about the fact that some practices help us really zoom in and get more insight into ourselves, but we also need to combine that with zooming out. So that kind of seeing the bigger picture, because when we zoom out, we can see where our frames are broken. And a lot of these practices are about um, very much like removing your glasses, saying, okay, where, where have we been seeing things incorrectly? Where have we been deceiving ourselves in some way? And that's in a way what we're doing as an entire culture right now. You know, business as usual is is gone, and I would say probably never coming back. And so we're left now with, to some degree, either fixing or creating new frames, like new ways of seeing the world, new ways of interacting. And it's crucial that we have some kind of process of, of thinking deeply about this and, uh, you know, talking about it. But then these practices keep it fresh, and they keep us from falling into different cognitive traps that 
we all have capacity to fall into. So in, in a sense, it's about the development of our own wisdom individually um, and as a group. Yeah, and the other thing that we are starting to really ramp up is the community calls. We were doing them every month and we're now going to be doing them every week and with a guest. So the next one next Tuesday will be with Jordan Hall. So a group sense making call with Jordan Hall, which you mentioned at the beginning, Ali, but it's for me, sense making is an absolutely essential part of resilience. Because if we can really understand, and Jordan Hall is, is one of the best at that, kind of just explaining what the deeper shifts are that we're seeing and the decay of kind of our old systems and what wants to come through. If we can really understand that, then we're not gonna, we are going to be more resilient because we're not going to be surprised by what happens. We're going to basically, I think a lot of people who've been watching us, watching the channel for a long time, certainly from the sense-making calls that we've had so far, most of them have said we were expecting this. We, we feel like we knew this was going to happen and we feel actually quite excited about what the shift is that we're on the verge of. So if you can really understand what these deeper shifts are, we can prepare and we can not be knocked off our center when they happen. Yeah. So just to, just to round off, if you're interested in taking part in the day, then do register. There'll be a link in the show notes below and we'll see you soon. As the tech revolution continues to destroy old media, the internet is fueling a new intellectual awakening. Television made people look stupider than they were. It turns out that people are smarter with longer attention spans than we thought. I'm a journalist and filmmaker. For many years I made documentaries for the likes of the BBC and Channel 4. But I don't think the mainstream media can provide the level of analysis and insight we need for the extraordinary times we're going through, where the old structures that made sense of the world break down. It's like we're entering, just entering into the underworld and it's a descent. We're feeling everything starting to shake and the center cannot hold. And when our ways of thinking break down, it's the rebels and the renegades who dare to think differently who are needed to reboot the system. And right, so what's happening is that people are perceiving, because it's becoming increasingly obvious, that all of these artifacts of the way that we've gone about doing civilization are breaking down and failing in a way that is no longer easy to pretend isn't happening. And so as a consequence, this triggers a deep visceral sense. And that's a good thing, right? Because that deep visceral sense is the return to the liminal, the return to the mystery. The shift that we are on the precipice of is not like the shift from the dark ages to the enlightenment. It's like more like a shift from single cell to multicellular life. These are the people and ideas Rebel Wisdom is searching out to try to make sense of the growing chaos. The evolution screwed up. It handed us the tools to recognize that we don't have to value the game that it is playing and that we can now repurpose the hardware to something that's actually worthwhile. That's what I actually have hope in, is that if, if enough people can come to that realization, then, then we wake up, and not in some bullshit evangelical megachurch kind of way of being born again, but in a, in a truly initiatory way, being born again of like, I know my purpose, I know my part, and I'm willing to practice resurrection. I'm willing to offer my life fully and freely, in love, in every moment. And then we're invincible. Like then we can turn things on a dime. It's also about trying to create a new form of conversation, one based on genuine dialogue, letting go of ideology and fixed ideas. So we want to be a place that hosts this new form of conversation, both online, and at our events. Check out our films, join the conversation, and to get early access to some great films and exclusive content, please consider supporting us on Patreon.